first rap that I wrote, I think I must have been about eight or nine years old. My mom, she studied to be a school teacher. So if I wanted to go play handball, if I wanted to go to the beach, she would call for a essay. And so I got really great at writing. I actually had my own little composition notebook that I took in with me to my audition for the record label. I had that book with me and they would put on tracks and they say, say something to this. Now say something to this, you know? So that's pretty much how the first album was put together. MC Light became the first female MC to release a solo album with a major label. An authentic hip hop purist dedicated to wordplay and storytelling. The first solo album, Light as a Rock, was released in 88. Much of that first album resonated with women. When you say you love me, it doesn't matter. It goes into my head as just chit chatter. Paper Thin was a pushback for dudes acting silly. It was me clapping back at dudes talking smack and thinking that I was gonna go for the rigmarole. By the late 1980s, there was a growing awareness of hip hop as a credible music genre. And that's when my group, Salt and Pepper, introduced something new into the game sex appeal. Sexually explicit, tongue in cheek, coy, playing, toying with the sexuality aspects of being a woman in hip hop, salt and pepper. Our iconic single, Push It, went platinum. Salt and Pepper, Push It, it's like one of my favorite songs. When me and my friends used to always like act like we were salt and pepper at the time. Now, we've talked about the image of female rappers in the past. Your image is a lot more ladylike. Um, ladies are meant to be sexy and pretty, and why not a little makeup, a little sexy, you know, as long as you don't get carried away. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think yeah, I have... it's like a little makeup. And yeah, and some combat boots, yeah. you know? <laughs> Mix it up. Me and Pep's first album, Hot, Cool, and Vicious, went platinum in 1988. They had on leather jackets, and they just looked so cool. Everybody today took a page out Salt and Pepper's books. Everyone. By the late 1980s, a new kind of rap was emerging on the West Coast in protest against police brutality. Los Angeles in the 80s was considered scandalous Los Angeles. Oh, there was in the height of the crack cocaine epidemic. If you were young, you were black, you were being harassed. Put your hands down, you, were you were considered in gangs. Among these young men's heroes are so-called gangster rappers. The title gangster rap. The title was given to us. No gangster rap! No gangster rap! It degrades women, it glorifies violence, creating the culture of drugs, the culture of guns and rape. For those who were just doing music, it was a really like what Ice Cube says all the time, it was the hood CNN. It, they, they were making stories based off of what was going on in their community. I really started trying to become a professional in it early 89 after meeting Ice Cube. Because coming in it as a young girl, you really don't have a voice. So it's one girl to every click. So we were like the token of the group. My image did start to bother me. I remember reading an article of them labeling my music as gangster rap. And I'm like, gangster rap? I'm not a gangster. Yo-Yo famously pushed back on labels and gave women a voice in the rap game. I wanted them to see me for who I was and started creating my own image for myself. My name is Yo-Yo. I'm not a one more. I like to bump so swift. It's got to be... You can't play with my Yo-Yo. It's powerful to me because I was trying to build this intelligent black woman's image. Guys were saying, all you want to get is your nails and your hair done and all of that. And it was really a chance to stand up and be bold and be fearless and to represent women in a different kind of way than uh, music was starting to portray us. 
I remember my mom saying, I don't want Ice Cube calling you a bitch. And I'm like, oh, he's talking about them, not me. <laughs> um, but West Coast music was really dissing women. I mean, a bitch is a bitch. It was just, it was really foul for women. We must hear these names time and time again in the songs that we dance to and the songs that we hear on the radio. The people must now begin to fight back. The race, degradation, the sex exploitation is unacceptable. Despite the growing trend of misogynistic lyrics in hip-hop, female MCs in the early 90s held their ground by responding with empowering messaging. I remember being interviewed and asked, how do you feel about the heavy misogyny within hip-hop or what have you? And I was just like, I don't own it. Me and Latifah over here calling sisters queens. That's what we're over here doing. Rapper Queen Latifah invited Moni Love to write an anthem for female MCs. And what they created was an instant classic. Ladies first. Man, ladies first was important. There's the old school notion of that women can't get along and we have to pit them against each other, all those horrible things that we do to women. They didn't allow that. The whole opening sequence with all of these magnificent, influential uh, black women on the slideshow at the beginning of the video, that's all Latifah and me, baby. She just was like pride, empowerment. That's what I want it to be, Moni. A woman could bear you, break you, take you. Now it's time to rhyme. Can you relate to a sister dope, dope enough to make you holler and scream? And then I slide in real quick and I'm like, let me take it from here, queen. queen. Excuse me, but I think I'm about to to get into precisely what I am about to do. The I'm thing about Queen Latifah is she is all about lifting others up with her. Honestly, I thought Queen Latifah was like a real queen. You never heard nobody call themselves like the queen. If I can bring someone's enlightenment to a higher level, listening to my music, I will have no problem with it. Queen Latifah absolutely presented a model of what women could do in hip hop. But hip hop was about to get an entirely different vision of empowerment in an up and coming artist, Little Kim. That was the first time for me that I saw that much sexiness in female hip hop. She created and started that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.